Okay, so here in this problem, this is the lower envelope. Uh, what we're given is a set, unsorted, unordered, of n lines in the plane. So they're just some messy, uh, unordered. They go to infinity in both directions. Uh, this one ends up intersecting over there. Oh, that's not. These guys go off to there, and maybe there's another one here. Okay, so the lower envelope is the least, the lowest point on the set of lines as you sp span from left to right, from minus infinity to positive infinity. So in this little example, the lower envelope goes this way. And each one of these points is called a break point. So this lower envelope has one, two, three, four line segments and three break points. So is that clear by example what, what a lower envelope of a set of n lines is? What do you mean the four segments? Say what? What do you mean the four segments? Oh, the other segments. Well, there's a little segment in here, yeah. It's, it's hard to see, probably the ones in Livermore have trouble, but there's a little segment in here between two breakpoints. Lower envelopes do we have? How many lower envelopes? Just one. What about other kinds of curves, like the right of that and the left of that? Well, this is, um, these lines go to infinity in both directions. Right. Okay, so there's only one lower envelope. And the way I drew these, the slopes that I drew, all, all this stuff over here is all above this one as you go to, to negative infinity. And all the ones over here are above. Well, I guess there's some ambiguity, especially since this line isn't very straight. There could be some ambiguity as to whether these guys ever meet. OK. Definition, again, is really just if this is the x-axis. Well, actually, uh, yeah, I don't want the x-axis um, because some of the action might occur below there. But I just want to find among these, these n lines the lowest point on the lines at every point along the horizontal axis. Along the horizontal axis, I just go down. Every point I go down, I find the lowest point. And then the collection of those is the lowest envelope, or the lower, the lower envelope. OK, so our problem is to compute what that lower envelope is, given the set of n lines. Now, first you have to decide, how are you going to represent the lines, and how do you represent the envelope? Well, you, obviously, you represent the lines by uh, intercept slope form. So you've got two numbers to represent each line. How do you represent the lower envelope? It's what? Um, set of pairs of points. Well, yeah, a pair of points. I mean, yeah, the x, y coordinate, right? And so the output is um, a sorted list of points. Okay, it's sorted left to right by the breakpoints, but you also have to, and because it's sorted, you can figure out what the line segments are between and the interior ones. The, the um, the one that goes off to minus infinity and the one that goes off to positive infinity has to be specified explicitly. So you can think of the output as either being a set of line segments, ordered list of line segments, and each line segment is described by its left and right endpoint, or possibly negative infinity or possibly positive infinity. Well, that's one way of, of specifying it or it's specified by just the breakpoints themselves in sorted order, and then what the, what the negative infinity and positive infinity line segment, half line, is, okay? So we're given the end lines, and we know what a lower envelope is. And then the, let's just say the output 
is an ordered list of, uh, well, it's going to be a half line followed by line segments followed finally at the end by a half line. And each line segment is going to be described by its left end point and by its right end point. And if you were really programming this, you might want to throw in what the, uh, the line itself was, but you can figure that out from these two points anyway. Yeah? If we're doing this as line segments, won't we include each point twice? Yeah. It's okay. So the question was, if we, if we describe each line segment here explicitly, then each point, at least each of the interior points, is described twice. Uh, so an, another representation of the output could just be those breakpoints, the description of the breakpoints in sorted order, and then the ends. Either way, the size of, of one description is proportional to the other description, so it's, it's not going to be the heart of the matter. The heart of the matter is going to be how we get this output from this input. What's the algorithm? What's the running time? Okay. Um, so I'm going to propose an algorithm. And we're going to analyze its running time. And then we're going to see how it relates to some other algorithms. <coughs> so the, the algorithm I'm going to propose is a divide and conquer algorithm. And the first observation in terms of developing this divide and conquer algorithm is that it's a trivial one, but when you look at the lower envelope, you see, of course, that the slopes of the lines that are on the line segment, the, the lines that are on the lower envelope, of course, those slopes are decreasing as you go from left to right. All right. It, if you look at minus infinity, there's some line which is on the lower envelope. And it stays on the lower envelope until some other line intersects it and becomes lower than it. All right? That means that this line has a lower slope than this line had. The second line has to have a lower slope than the, than the first one. And, and then the second line stays on the lower envelope until some point where another line intersects it and becomes lower. And of course, this, these two lines being straight, they only intersect once, and therefore this new line is lower than the old line forever to the right. And so the slopes of the lines as you go from left to right are, of course, decreasing. So observe the slopes of the lines <coughs> on the lower envelope. They must decrease. left to right as we move across this lower envelope, or as, x, as the x-coordinate increases. All right. Well, with that observation, um, that sort of leads into the next step that we're going to do with this algorithm, which is or step, step zero, perhaps, which is to sort the end lines by uh, in order of slope largest first. How, how much time does it take to do this? Or what technology do we have to slope the, to, yeah? Right. So we know how to do this in big O of n log n time, certainly. All right. The next point um, is that I want to solve this, as I said, by divide and conquer. So given that I've, I've divided, given that I've sorted the, um, the 
list by their uh, slopes of the lines, and given that we know that the solution, the lowest lower envelope, must uh, proceed through lines of decreasing slope, what seems like a sensible way to divide the set of lines? And what seems like a sensible, perhaps sensible way of solving this thing by divide and conquer? You could divide them according to the slope by one half at the low, low slope, one at the last slope. And then uh, calculate the lower envelope for both sets independently and then try to merge them in some reasonable way. Right. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to uh, divide the, uh, the, the set of lines, and maybe I should give a, a name to it. And the crux of everything, of course, is what the combination is. How do you combine two lower envelopes to become the lower envelope of the union? Yeah? Could you find the line with the biggest slope in B and the one with the smallest slope in A and find their intersection point and that would do it? No. It's not quite so simple. I mean, so what's happening here is already some suggestions how, uh, how we're going to do this uh, intersection or how we're going to do the, com the combination. Or you might call it merge if you want. But um, it's not going to be just a single operation. It isn't always going to be. I think what the, what the proposal here was was that the the line with least slope of LEA would then intersect the line of greatest slope of LEB, and that would then be the lower envelope of the two. Well, it could happen. It's possible, but that's a, be a very fortuitous case. It certainly doesn't need to. For example, if I took LEB and shifted it way over there, let's just draw it just to get your intuition going a little bit. Let's just take another example. Um, now, I want the winds in B to have less slope. See, this over here could be LE. B. And then what you see what happens, the lower envelope is, is just this. The combined lower envelope is this one. And therefore, we've, in fact, cut away the line of greatest, the line of least slope in LEA and also the line of greatest slope in LEB. So it isn't going to be quite so simple uh, as a single intersection. We're going to have to do something which is going to take more time and more operations than that. We could go from the outward in, in the exact opposite direction, taking first the line with the largest slope of B and then the line with the smallest slope of A and intersect them. And if the intersection point is below two, uh, the two envelopes, we have to go inwards and furthermore until we find one that is below, and then we can stop and throw away all the other line segments. Yeah, uh, there, there are various ways. I'm going to develop something which is similar to that, um, maybe isomorphic to it, but it's going to be described slightly differently. But yeah, we want to develop uh, some algorithm that's akin to the merge operation when we had ordered lists. Now we have objects which are more complex than ordered lists. Um, but we'll want, we'll want an algorithm which, in the end, does a number of intersections or a number of comparisons, which is just proportional to the number of, of lines in total on the two lower envelopes. Okay. So combine. So yeah, instead of taking. Um, I mean, I think, I think if, I, if we took an hour or so and just asked for suggestions, a lot of people would be able to develop a good algorithm for this. So I don't mean to stifle your creativity, but I'm just going to inst uh, instead here develop one. And then in your homework, what you're going to have to do is, is uh, really do a, another example which is related to this one. OK, so to understand the combining, uh, let's look at the following, well, let's make the following definition. Uh, a line L is, actually this definition, I mean, it's really, I just want to focus your attention on a concept um, instead of a definition. A line L on the lower envelope, let's say, of A, uh, is on that lower envelope 
in some interval. Okay, it could be uh, a half infinity, or it could be a finite interval. Okay. That was a rather trivial definition, right? Just really focusing your attention on that, on that fact. Now, let's observe that the lower envelope of A union B, what does it look like? What can we say that it looks like? Well, we know that the lower envelope of any collection of lines, if we look at the lines left to right, those lines are in decreasing slope. But all the lines in A have greater slope than all the lines in B. So what happens in the lower envelope of A union B is as we go left to right, we have some lines from A followed then at some point by some lines in B. We never have some lines in A followed by some lines in B followed again by some lines in A. And what will those lines in A be? What will the lines in A consist of uh, that are part of the lower envelope of A union B? They'll be what? They'll be part of the lower envelope of A. And then again, just anything that was a loser when we computed the lower envelope of A, it's not going to come back and be part of the lower envelope of A union B. Okay, and similarly for B. So what I'm saying is this. The lower envelope of the union consists of some initial, and when I'm saying initial, I'm talking about left to right, as you're looking left to right, some initial portion of the lower envelope of A, followed by some end portion of the lower envelope of, we have a notation for the LEB. Certainly a line that was not in the lower envelope of A, a line that's from set A but not in the lower envelope of A, it's not going to be in the lower envelope of the union of A and B. And because it's already beaten everywhere. Everywhere along that line, there's some other line that was lower than it. That's what we learned when we computed the lower envelope of A. And similarly for B. And by the fact that these slopes are divided, the slopes in A are bigger than the slopes in B, you, what it looks like, what the lower envelope of the union looks like is you have some initial portion of the lower envelope from the A set up to some point and then followed by some end portion of the lower envelopes in B. Now, either one of these things might be empty. <coughs> it's, I think if you, well, may, maybe, uh, if you draw extremely enough, uh, well, I'm not sure. If we allow the entire plane, it may be that neither of these is going to be empty. If we restrict to some finite portion, then one or the other can be empty. But anyway, this is general. This is in general what it looks like. And there is some point. So up to some point, and I'll call it P star, <coughs> where that transition happens. OK? So everybody with me on this observation? These things sound very simple at first, but really in, when you get it cleanly enough with these kind of observations, then you have your hands uh, on the analysis and on the proof that this is right. OK. Now, what can we say about P star? All right, so the crux of, of combining really is to find that P star. We want to find that place where we're going to shift from what's on the lower envelope of A to what's on the lower envelope of B. Yeah, in the back. The lowest intersecting line, um, uh, one cross in the 
Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure. That doesn't sound. Yeah. 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 Well, the first thing is that the star has to lie on both envelopes. Right. That's that's the observation that I want to use here, is that um, P star is an intersection of two lines. Let's call them L uh, A and L B, one from set A and one from set B. Well, so far that's trivial. Of course, it's an intersection of two lines. I mean, that, that comes from definition. But such that L A is on L E A at point. P star and LB is on LEB at P star. Both of these lines are respectively on their lower envelopes at that intersection point. Again, in a sense, a trivial observation, but when you put it into words, it sounds trivial when you put it into words, but at least in developing this, I was muddled for a while before saying this explicitly. This is a very useful fact to observe, okay? Because you could ask the next question now, if I take all the pairwise intersections, I've got n lines in total, but let's say n over 2 from A, set A, and n over 2 from set B, or n over 2 that are on LEA and at most any L over, n over 2 on LEB, if I take those pairwise intersections, and there's about n squared over four of them, okay, how many of those intersection points will be where the two respective lines are on the respective lower envelopes? Does anybody understand the question? If I were to take every line in the lower envelope of uh, every line that's on LEA and intersect it with every line that's on LEB, that's about n squared over four intersections. So I've got a various set of points. How many of those points will be respectively on the lower envelope, on the two lower envelopes defined, um, on the two lower envelopes, LEA and LEB, at where those respective lines are on that envelope? Just one. Just one. Yeah, if you understood the question, the answer is pretty simple. Just one. And that one is, that point is where? It's P star. So that tells you, by the way, an algorithm for finding P star. Not a particularly good algorithm, but certainly an algorithm. Okay, so here. I'm saying what? The lower envelope of A is lower envelope, envelope of B is the most intersection only point. Well, that may be true also, and that may be a useful thing to know. The suggestion is that the lower envelope of A and lower envelope of B can only intersect once. Because if you look at this, not the line, that's just the same. Yeah. Just the, not the line, but the same. Is that, is that true? Yeah, I believe that's true, and that's the essence of what we're doing. OK, so if you follow all that hand waving, the following is an algorithm. Here's a first algorithm to find P star. Not a great algorithm, but a good one. Anyway, it works. Um, for each line LA in, let's restrict it already to the lower envelope of A. And for each line LB on LEB, let P be the intersection point of LA and LB. 
if um, LA is on L E A at P and L B is on L E B at P, then P star equals P. So we're going to intersect every line that's on LEA with every line that's on LEB. Being straight lines, there's a unique intersection point P for each one of those pairs. We then look at that pair, we look at that point P and we ask, was, is LA on LEA at P and is LB on LEB at P? And if the answer is yes, then we found P star. So this is, a, this is an algorithm that will find P star, and then knowing P star, we can certainly output the lower envelope of the union. It's, as I wrote over there, it's the initial portion of LEA up to point P star, followed by the portion after P star of LEB. How many intersections is this? Well, at least um, th we're talking now about combining LEA and LEB. It, it's what? It's at most the length of A times the length of B. We don't know how many are actually on LEA and how many are on LEB. But again, in worst case analysis, it's less than or equal to the product of the size of A and the size of B. A was about n over 2. B was about n over 2. So it's about n squared over 4. OK? So. With this algorithm, if we use this as our combination algorithm, T of n, if we define that as the worst case number of intersections, to find the lower envelope of A union B, I mean, defining the lower envelope of the entire set. And I'm not talking about um, just the merge operation anymore or the combination. Then we have T of A, T of N is less than or equal to uh, 2 T of N over 2 plus some constant times N squared. Okay. Well, you can, you can take this home and, and see how this solves, what this solves to, okay? But at the top level, at the first level of recursion where you're, you're merging two lists of size n over 2, you're certainly doing about n over 4, at worst case, n, over, n squared over 4 intersections. So adding up all the other stuff that comes below it in the recursion, it's not going to be negative, right? So you can only add. So this is... Um, We're going to see that, OK? Uh, we can certainly rig up examples where, where that happens, OK? So that's not really what we want. Anybody have an idea of what time bound we should shoot for? N squared log n? N log n, right. I don't know if anybody said N squared log n, or I just heard it wrong. Yeah, we want to do n log n. We want to do something that's analogous to merge sort. So we've got to be a little more clever about merging. But this is the key. What we have here is the, really the key point about p, a p star. And well, it's written up over here as well. We know what p star, we know a characterization of p star. Now all we need is a nice algorithm to find it, to find those two line segments, or those two lines, which are respectively on their lower envelopes at the point where they intersect. Okay, so here's going to be my primitive, so here's combine in detail. 
And the primitive operation, well, the primitive kind of, um, maybe it's not a primitive because that sounds like an individual operation, but a key component is the following. Given a line L B from B, find the point P where L B intersects that lower envelope of A. So suppose we have a black box that can solve this one. I'm given a line, a particular line LB. So it's from set B, of course. It's a line which is on LEB. Find the point P where that line intersects the lower envelope of A. Yeah? What if it doesn't intersect it? Um, well, let's see. I could, of course, say if, if it does, but we're dealing with the entire x coordinate here, I mean, the entire all, all space. All right. Um, so here's our general picture of, of LEA. And this is out to infinity, negative infinity, and this is out to positive infinity, OK? The line LB has slope which is less than any of the slopes on here, OK? So how could it not intersect, um, how could it not intersect some this lower envelope somewhere. Okay, it seems just geometrically it seems to me that the only way to do that is if it, if it had a slope here somewhere intermediate, if it was above but had a slope that inter is intermediate to here. But then that violates the the sorting assumptions. By the way we split it into LEA and LEB. Okay, but let's just say we have this key component. Okay? Then clearly what I want to do with this is I want to find that intersection point P for each line that's on LEB. And when I find that point, I just want to test whether that line LB is on its lower envelope at point P. Okay, so let me rewrite this. Another algorithm. for each line LB on LEB, find the intersection point P of LB and LEA. And then how do we know if we're done? If LEB, sorry, if LB is on LEB at point P, then P star equals P. So I just rewrote what the algorithm is, but I didn't really tell you how um, we're going to do this finding the intersection business. In particular, I haven't told you how to do it in a way that's, that's uh, going to be efficient overall. <coughs> well, here I just said for each line LB, maybe I should impose some ordering. And let's do this. Um, in order, 
of increasing slope So what that means is here was LEA, and we've got LE, LEB somewhere sitting. Well, yeah, this is not less slope than that. Okay. And in order of, of increasing slope, which means I'm going to take the extreme one here first, extreme one here first. I'm going to find where it intersects LEA. And I'm going to see whether that intersection point P is a point where this line is on its lower envelope. And if it is, we're done. But if it isn't, then we should consider the next one. Okay? And if its intersection with LEA is not at a point where this is on the lower envelope of LEB, then we should consider the next one and find its intersection point. And again, if, it, if that intersection point has the nice property that this line is on the lower envelope, or its lower envelope at that point, then we're done. But if not, we should consider the next one. Okay? So now, unfortunately, in this little example, the intersection is at the most extreme left line of LEB. That's not general, of course. But given what I've said so far, who can now see how we're going to do all these intersections? We have a collection of, of intersection computations that we have, or intersection computations of a single line with the whole lower envelope. We want to do all of those in a way that's, that's fairly efficient overall. Start from the middle one. Start from the middle one. No, I, I want to I keep the superstructure the way I have here. Where I'm going to start here and, and work over. But you can make your, your idea work too. It's just a different idea. That's the crux of it. OK, I've got 30 seconds to explain what he just said to everybody else. And if we don't finish it in those 30 seconds, we'll do it again next time. How, let's just take a look at the first one that I needed, first intersection I need to solve. I need to figure out, let me take a little more extreme example. <laughs> a little more extreme example. I need to figure out, this is, my, this is the one of, of smallest slope on LB. So this is my first LB on LEB. And I need to figure out where this thing intersects this lower envelope. Well, actually, that's quite easy if I have the representation of this lower envelope LEA the way I said. We have it as an ordered list of, of breakpoints or line segments. I just look along that list in this direction at those breakpoints. This is a point which is above this. I have the formula for this line. This point is above there. So I know we haven't intersected yet. So I move over to the next one. Uh, well, the next one is over here. It isn't always so immediate that it happens. The next breakpoint on LEA is here. And that's lower than this point, than this, this line. It's below that line. So the intersection comes where I have two consecutive breakpoints one on the right, which is above the line, and one on the left, which is below that line. So to find that intersection point, I just move in. And then I ask, this is P, is this line on its lower envelope at point P? Well, the example I had had a whole bunch of stuff coming in here on LEA, uh, LEB. So the answer is no. It's not on its lower envelope. The, the lower envelope where this is on is, ends here. And now the key point. I need to find where the next line on LEB intersects this lower envelope, LEA. And the point that was made, as you can see geometrically, and convince yourself with a little algebra if it takes that, 
is that its intersection point, call it P again, its intersection point is going to be to the left of this intersection point. So there's absolutely no use in looking at how this line relates to these points that were passed over previously. It's going to be below them. So there's no reason to do those again. You start your search for this thing by looking at the point which was below, the, la the last point you looked at on your previous key component. You look there going over to the left. And now you have everything. Very, it was, oh, we're over time. We went too fast at the end. But the point is that your first intersection computations looked at some points and stopped. The next one starts looking to the left where the previous one left off and keeps going. And, and that property is going to hold. And therefore, the total number of intersections you do is going to be bounded by twice the number of points on this lower envelope. And we're finally going to get a recurrence relation, which is t of n to t of n over 2 plus 2n. And that's going to solve to n log n. And we really did it uh, with a little bit of um, time over. I'll, I'll talk about this again a little bit next time as well. So let me just very briefly remind you where we got to last time in finding lower envelopes. We were developing a, um, an order n log n operation algorithm for lower envelope. And the crux of it was, it's a divide and conquer, and the crux of it was that you had the lower envelope from the A side, and you had the lower envelope from the B side, and you were trying to merge them. And the crux of that was that you were going to take one line at a time from the left side, uh, sorry, the, uh, the B side, which, uh, and see where that line intersected LEA. And then you were going to test whether or not that point was uh, whether at this point, this line, LB, is LB on LEB at that point. And if it was, you're done. And if not, then you would move on to some other line. Now, if we just did these lines in any order, the lines from LEB, then we ended up with a quadratic time algorithm because uh, it looked like you had to look at all the lines here for every line on the other side. The observation that we made at the very end of last time was that if instead of taking these lines in just some arbitrary order, if you took them uh, in the order of least slope first and you found that intersection point and this was not, LE, LB was not on LEB at that point, then you knew that the point you're looking for had to be further to the left from here. Okay, I mean, why is, why is LB not on LEB at this point? Is because it got beaten. There's some other line from LEB which, has, which is lower at that point, which means that there's some line with greater slope from LEB that's lower. So its intersection with LEA has got to be further to the left. And that means that when you want to find its intersection with LEB, you only have to look at the lines, or uh, equivalently, at these breakpoints that are further to the left than the lines or breakpoints you looked at when you were finding this point for LB. That is the absolutely critical observation that leads to a fast algorithm. There's actually a subtle point that there's one point that's, that's repeated. There's, when I did the search for this intersection, I might have looked past a number of points. And uh, I actually, the criteria for, for finding this intersection was that this line is below this point, and I'm breakpoint on LEA, and I'm moving over until I find a breakpoint yeah, on, on LEA, which is here, such that this line is bigger than that one. Okay, And then when I look at the next intersection, 
this line with LEB, I still have to look at this point again because its intersection might have actually been in this segment. Okay. So there's, there's one point which is repeated between each line on, LE, on LEB that I'm concerned with. But you're still moving to the left each time with these points. And what that means is that this, the entire collection, over the entire collection of lines on LEB, the number of these points that you have to query is at most 2n. Or equivalently, the number of intersections, straight line intersections that you have to do is at most 2n over the entire merging process. Okay, that's the absolutely critical point. Now, I've written that up, or at least I've stated that in the notes that I put on the web, and uh, that's really what you have to clarify for yourself if it isn't clear at this moment. But that tells you then that the time T of n, if T of n is the number of operations we're doing to build the entire lower envelope, that's 2 T of n over 2 because this is a divide and conquer. We're splitting into two halves, solving each half separately. That's the LEA and the LEB, doing that twice. Plus then the merging operation, which I just said is bounded by 2 n of these primitive type operations, either doing line intersections or querying whether a point on a line is below some other point. To do that query is easy. You just evaluate. If I want to know whether this line, say, is below this point, I know what this point is, the xy coordinate is. I know what the equation of this line is. So I just plug in x into the equation of this line. I see what the value is here, and then I compare, compare that value to y. So that's, I'm taking that as a single primitive operation. Uh, so that's 2n of those primitive operations. And then we know what the solution is. And you always need the base case. Uh, and this thing solves. This recurrence solves to theta n log n, which implies that the running time, uh, running time, time or number of operations is big O of n log n. If you remember the, I saw on the tape this conversation last time took about 12 minutes, uh, which was a lot. I hope it was understandable. And I looked back in the book and uh, they screwed up. They just get it wrong. I mean, if you look at the beginning of the book where they talk about merge sort, uh, they set up this recurrence. As, a, as an upper bound on the number of worst case number of, of operations that the uh, merge sort does. And then they show properly that this recurrence taken as a function, for, you know, forget where it came from, has this theta behavior. And then they improperly conclude that the worst case behavior of merge sort is theta of n log n. But in fact, all they've done is the upper bound. Now they're right that, that that's, it, is, it is that behavior, but they hadn't established it yet in that book. Okay, and, and we'll do the second part, the lower bound part of that today. <clears throat>